you talk about two teams headed in different directions. Oklahoma State is definitely trending up. Texas is holding steady. Texas is taking on water, but Texas is surviving, and they survived to, uh, yesterday against the 23rd ranked Kansas State Wildcats, 33-30 in overtime in a game that had no business going to overtime. It was 27 to seven with four minutes left in the third quarter. And then it was all Wildcats to end regulation. And they storm back, tie the game at 30. Kansas State missed a 27 yard field goal with a chance to uh, tie the game late. They had to come back, get another stop, come back and kick the eventual game tying field goal. And they were a fourth down stop away from stealing this one in Austin. They were all the way down at the goal line, decided to go for it on fourth and goal in overtime, steal the win. They come up short, their play is blown up. But a couple of things, big takeaways for me, Garrett. Texas did a fantastic job of taking control of this game early. We saw them do that against Houston a couple weeks ago. But this is now a trend with the Longhorns, where they take control of a game, and one or two things go wrong, and it just spirals on them, and it lets the team that they have cornered slowly but surely come back into the game. It happened against Houston. It happened uh, didn't happen against BYU last week because BYU is just overmatched, but definitely happened against Kansas State this week. Malik Murphy in the first half, Malik Murphy in the second half looked like two completely different people. In the first half, all the takes – of this week where, oh, they're not, they're too scared to unleash him. They have a shortened playbook, yada, yada, yada. That looked like fool's play um, with, with his play on the field. He had a connection with Adonai Mitchell in the first half. He was slinging it all over the yard. He looked like he had full control of the playbook. And then the second half happened. And after they went up 27 to seven, it was ugly for the Longhorns offensively. Kansas State had no business coming back in this game, but there they were with a chance to steal it on fourth and goal in overtime. And listen, winners win. Texas found a way to win. A big part of that was their defense only giving up 43 yards on the ground. I think that's a fantastic effort. Their defensive line was wreaking havoc all day. But this is a trend that's really concerning to me. As they close out their schedule, I'm really worried about the Longhorns and, you know, we talked about it in our power rankings breakdown. It's why I have Alabama ahead of Texas right now, even though they lost head to head. Yeah. And I think the thing you have to look at with Texas is obviously this would be a different team if Quinn Ewers is at the helm, but he's would not. It though, like, would well, it? Well, it, it would. They looked better to start the season, and he was running the offense more efficiently than Malik was. The problem is Malik Murphy is just, he's, he's growing up before our eyes, yeah. right? Nobody really is threatened by him. So you can kind of sell out to stop the run a little bit better. And, and then, you know, the numbers come down a little bit. They still got what they wanted to in the rush game. They, you know, they, they had, who is it? Brooks had 112 and Baxter had 90. They both had, Baxter a touchdown. had 10 yards of carry. It was, he was, he looked healthy yeah. and he looked really dangerous. And a lot of it was the 54 yard score, right? Like that's a big chunk, but like chunks happen. So like, you gotta, you gotta put those in the stat. So, but, but the thing is you don't necessarily get afraid of Malik Murphy the same way you do with Quinn Ewers. And this is the big thing that we hear a lot from Texas fans as well. If this quarterback had been healthy, then da, 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 da. Well, he's not. And you got to play the games that are on the field. And and so look, it's, it's taking steps in the right direction. I think Malik looked better this week than he did last week, but it was up and down. It was inconsistent, right? It it wasn't a consistent game from him into the game. He he had completed 51% of his passes through two picks. And so, you know, that's not a great effort, but, you know, he kept him in it. He he kept him trying to, he kept trying to fight back. Really have to give credit to Will Howard for willing his team, no pun intended, back into this game. And, and just, I mean, leading a furious comeback effort that uh, I, I still don't know why they didn't just kick that field goal. Maybe it was just low confidence in the kicker. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you have to give Texas the credit for winning. But this does probably shake your confidence about their ability to go ahead and win the conference or make the playoff in that order. Obviously, you'd have to win your conference before you make the playoff. This was their last major hurdle before the conference championship game. I'm worried about, you know, how does Malik handle a better defense if he's still the starting quarterback when they play Iowa State in a couple weeks? Iowa State's a fantastic defense and could cause a lot of problems for him. How do, they, how do they handle an offense like Oklahoma State that's not going to, you know, fall asleep for the first three quarters and then finally wake up in the fourth 
with Holly Gordon, right? Well, and, and so, we saw how dominant Oklahoma State looked up front and, and the defensive side of the ball too. They were giving you know Dylan Gabriel problems. That's going to be the same thing if they're playing Texas, right? They're going to give Malik Murphy issues. They're going to get to him, and they're going to be coming for the ball. They're going to be coming to try to strip sack and, and cause turnovers. And if you're Malik Murphy, you have to work on that and improve your game. I, I feel bad for him because he got thrust into this situation all of a sudden, but you're the backup of Texas. You got to be ready to go. And, you know, I, I I hear what you're saying about, you know, it would be different with Quinn. I'm not convinced because Quinn was prone to one or two plays like that a game too. It didn't always look as bad as some of what Murphy, you know, did yesterday. Murphy's interceptions were really bad. Um, just not even close on at least one of them. But Quinn's prone to that too, man. Like he, he yeah. is not, you know. We, we saw it last year. We talked about it a lot this year. I, I'm worried about Texas getting through the rest of their schedule unscathed. This sure. was their last really big test before the conference championship game. And I wonder if a win, you know, let's say they do win out. Let's say they beat Oklahoma State in Arlington. Does a win over Oklahoma State, rather than avenging that lost Oklahoma, does that move the needle enough to jump them over a one-loss Oregon? or an undefeated Washington or someone that, you know, is ahead of them in the pecking order right now. Obviously specifics will matter at the time, but I have a really hard time seeing how they're going to keep a one loss Texas. If that one loss or those victories are of any variety, um, I, I guess a one loss conference champion, Texas, especially out of the playoff. I, I just don't see how it happens. I don't think Oregon gets the benefit of the doubt. I don't think, you know, Bama gets the benefit of the doubt any more than Texas does in this situation, strictly for ratings. And, and I'm, I'm just going to be honest, like, obviously it's a product that's for the TV. Texas will sell tickets. Texas will sell eyeballs. Texas will sell, you know, ad spots on the TVs. If you get to go Texas, Georgia or, or Texas, Florida State, or, you know, Texas, Michigan, or any of those matchups, those are going to sell better than, you know, throwing in the one loss Oregon Ducks or the, the you know, the, you know, I, I don't even know who else you'd be talking about in that situation. But I just think that Texas would be able to make it. I don't think they'd be able to do that much if they can't get Quinn back. Because my only thing with Quinn is, look, Quinn, he has the propensity to make stupid decisions, right? He makes dumb decisions, and, and then he, you know, throws a pick that has Texas fans ripping their hair out. But when he's on, he is so good. He is so good when he's on. He he doesn't miss passes. He can bring you all the way back. And that makes the defense from that point until he goes cold again, it makes the defense approach the game differently, right? It means that you're going to have the defense scrambling. You're going to get a lot more out of Brooks and Baxter and, and those boys on the ground in addition to what he gives you in the pass game. He, he's just such a weapon and a threat when he's playing well that I think that you have to respect that a little bit more which just isn't something that Malik Murphy brings. And that's nothing on Malik Murphy. He's a great quarterback and he'll develop, but he's not where Quinn is right now. And so if you're me and you're saying like, oh, well, if I'm a Texas fan, um, what do I would rather want by the end of the season? You're obviously going to want Quinn in there if you have to play Oklahoma State, because even though he might throw the ball directly at Oklahoma State a couple times, he'll will you back into this game. He, he will, you know, force your team to come back and, and to make this game competitive again. He's shown it. He can do it against, you know, Oklahoma, bringing them back to that game. I, I think he could do it against anybody in the conference, at least. It'll be fascinating to watch. It'll be fascinating to see how the committee handles, you know, beating the likes of TCU, Iowa State, Texas Tech. If that, that moves the needle over Oregon, you know, beating – USC, Oregon State, and maybe Washington uh, to avenge that loss. So it'll be it'll be fascinating to see. Gracious, yeah.